Today we're talking about two new and very important representatives of the ZenBook family, namely the ZenBook 14 OLED and the 2-in-1 convertible, the ZenBook S13 Flip OLED. The two models fall into slightly different price segments. The tiny S13 Flip comes with a few premium features. The addition of aluminum magnesium alloy in the chassis construction makes it durable and turns it into the lightest 13.3 convertible laptop on the market. And the ZenBook 14 OLED is no less a serious competitor in its price segment. But let's take a closer look at them and then it's up to you to decide if these models are a gimmick or not. The configurations of the two models are quite similar, which is why we decided to review them together, although each model has different types of users. On one hand, we have the traditional, more conservative users who want a normal laptop, like this ZenBook 14. On the other hand, we have the users who appreciate a convertible, a 2-in-1 laptop and tablet device like this S13 Flip. The first observation is that both of them have the same pretty powerful Intel Core i7 CPU, which means more engineering to fit into such a thin chassis. It's not even 15 mm thick overall, screen included. Let's briefly discuss the configurations of the two laptops and I'll start with this impressive Flip. As the manufacturer says, it's the lightest 13.3 convertible in the world. How much do aluminum and magnesium alloy matter? I'm going to compare it with the previous model, the one with the 11th generation Intel CPU, which although 1 mm thinner, was almost 200 grams heavier at 1.3 kilos. You can take our word for it, the difference from 1.3 to 1.1 kilos is instantly noticeable. This is also the first time I've seen the new A monogram on the lead with my own eyes. This logo was created to celebrate Asus 30th anniversary and first appeared on the ultra-luxurious ZenBook Edition 30, which is more than three years ago. But this is the first time I've seen this on a more affordable product, an emphasis on more since it still isn't that affordable. As a fun fact, because I'm kind of a Star Trek fan, the Asus monogram reminds me of the Starfleet insignia. As I said before, the S13 convertible is the premium model of the two. I would have liked the laptop lead to come with anti-fingerprint treatment though. Anyway, I like the touchpad on the S13 so much that I had to put the mouse away, just to feel how smooth my fingers glide over the touchpad and how well it responds to gestures. Speaking of gestures, it's nice how this S13 starts up the calculator app and how it brings the mundane touchpad to life, transforming it into a numpad with just a trivial swipe. The keyboards on both laptops are identical in size, but not in feel. On the S13, it requires a little more pressing force than on the ZenBook 14, but the latter is seemingly more finger-friendly and reminds me of the older ZenBook models. Either way, I liked both keyboards and I quickly got used to them. In contrast, the touchpad on the ZenBook 14 is different, with noticeably noisier clicks. Last but not least, since we're still in the ergonomics chapter, I'll mention the new Pen 2.0 stylus that comes bundled with the convertible. I wish it was wireless rechargeable, but who knows, maybe in the future we'll get that too. On the plus side, it charges quickly, it's full in half an hour and the specs say it would last about 140 hours of work. And now that we've got the design, the construction and the ergonomics out of the way, let's get to the main sides, the premium screens. Both are OLED of course and both are Samsung. On the S13 we have a newer panel model, but the differences between the two are tiny. It may or may not surprise you, but a newer panel on the little flip doesn't always win. Let's start with this one, shall we? Although Asa says we have a 100% DCI-P3 panel, our measurements stopped at 96%, even though we've measured the screen twice, choosing from my Asus app both the default native and dedicated display P3 profiles. Otherwise, we still have 100% sRGB and 95% Adobe RGB. But that's just the tip of the iceberg. What really impressed me about this display is just beginning. The color uniformity is very good, with values that recommend this display even to photo video editing professionals. The brightness uniformity is also excellent, the maximum deviation being only 2-3%, well below the 5% required in such activities in all tested modes. It is one of the best screens in these two regards I've ever tested. Add to that a teaspoon of color accuracy on top and a delta E of just 0.79 and you'll fully understand why I said what I said about professional work. I don't know exactly what the brightness of up to 550 nits in the manufacturer's specs refers to, but that's probably for the HDR mode. What is certain is that our Spider-X Elite stopped at just 360 nits and an OLED typical deep black of just 0.01.
The screen on the ZenBook 14 is almost as good as the one on the convertible. Ironically, we were able to measure an even higher gamut, DCI-P3 of 100% and 100% sRGB. The color uniformity and the brightness of the 14-inch model are just slightly weaker than on the S13, and the color accuracy passes Delta E1, which doesn't mean we had a bad screen, on the contrary. Oh, and the 14-inch screen is also faster, with a 90Hz refresh rate, compared to the trivial 60Hz on the flip. And with that, we get to the most interesting parts – performance, temperatures, heat output and finally noise made by the cooling system. I'll tell you right now, I've had some surprises. The most surprising behavior is always revealed to us by Cinebench, where things get usually pretty hot, quite literally. And we start again with the S13 flip. Take a look at the screenshots. The Intel Core i7-1260P CPU has a very interesting profile set in BIOS. It gets off to a valiant start with a respectable 37 watts TDP, but after wearing it down with 15 rounds of Cinebench R15, it settles down to 25 watts. In multi-core performance, it drops the frequency from 2.5 GHz down to 2, which allows the cooling to drop the CPU temperature from over 95 degrees Celsius to an amazing 75 in multi-core rendering, with all cores at 100%. In parallel, the ZenBook 14 behaves entirely different. Watch the screenshots here. Not only are all the frequencies higher, with multi-core rendering starting at 2800 MHz and finally stabilizing at 2300, but power consumption is also higher. We start at 45 watts TDP and stabilize at 30 watts after many, many rounds of rendering when the chassis heated up a lot. At the same time, it is noticeable that the CPU temperature has dropped less, from 98 degrees Celsius, somewhere around 91. Somehow I feel that this laptop is pushed closer to its limits than the little one. But I don't think these differences will be felt in everyday use or even in light, short-duration tasks that don't load the CPU too much. We couldn't skip Geekbench either, and in PC Mark 10, oddly or not, the little flip convertible wins the battle. Maybe thanks to its faster RAM, maybe. But the most interesting results came in the marathon tests. Let's take a look. Did you notice how the cooling system on the little flip got tired after 10 minutes of rendering? Physics always speaks for itself. In short, the same Core i7-1260P CPU can achieve 10% lower performance if the temperature goes up. As for the SSDs of the two laptops, they are both extremely fast, although they come from different manufacturers – Micron on the S13 and Samsung on the ZenBook 14. This might also have influenced the PC Mark 10 results. And finally, the part I like the most the temperature and noise. You may be wondering, how is it possible for the larger model to have similar maximum temperatures when we have more surface area? Well, I remind you of the CPU's TDP fluctuations, higher temperatures and higher frequencies on the ZenBook 14, which ended up getting better results in long tests. But the real surprise here is that the larger model was noisier, which doesn't usually happen. Don't jump to the wrong conclusions, we got these extreme values by taking the laptops to extremes. Both models are pretty quiet on a regular basis. Yes, usually neither of these two models will go above 35 decibels, but in rare moments, such as our renders, the S13 Flip can reach between 38 and 43 decibels and the ZenBook 14 puts out slightly more noise. You can imagine that on battery, unplugged, browsing the internet in bed, you won't hear any noise at all, because the fans will shut down completely if the tasks are mundane. Laptops will stay cool, although you should avoid blocking the inlets on the bottom. And last but not least, an ultra-portable isn't really portable unless it delivers the battery life to match. And in this area, the two ZenBooks really shine. Despite only having a 67 watt hour battery, the S13 Flip went for 10 hours in video playback, and that's with the screen at 150 nits. The bigger brother comes with a 75 watt hour battery, and we hit 11 hours. In short, both laptops will last you an entire business flight over the Atlantic or your workday at the office, without having to look for the 65 watt Type-C chargers in your bag. So here we are today with two extremely cool laptops to play with. We noticed that the quality of the panels is getting better with each generation, and we're also seeing OLED become a viable solution even for photo video editors. We're not talking about extremely affordable laptops, but their prices are not unreasonable for what they offer. With that being said, how do you like today's two examples of OLED laptops? How do you like the idea of an OLED screen for laptops overall? And of course, which one did you like more and why? Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe to our channel. See you next week.